In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Microsoft 365 settings. Those tricky little devils that you think you know, but you'll be amazed at what you don't know. Stay tuned. Greetings fellow YouTubers, Andy Malone, Microsoft MVP. So nice to see you on my channel, especially, hey, if this is your first visit. On this week's episode, I'm taking a look at Microsoft 365's admin settings. You know, those slippery little devils that are really super hard to find. And sometimes they're kind of buried in there, but they really do make a difference, not just as an administrator, but also uh, overall to your business as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I've got some really interesting things to show you. Now, as you know, I've been on holiday this week, and as such, I uh, get around to doing a little bit of reading. Um, I've been reading this, Defender for Endpoint. This is really neat, especially if you're studying for the exams SC200 and SC100. It really covers the, the whole thing in depth, so definitely check it out. So I'll put a link to the book in the description, and you can check it out. Now, um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers, so bump the subscribe button up there, ring that bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And if you'd like to ask a question about this session, or in fact, any of my sessions, then of course, just get it down below, and I'll do my very best for you. So I think without any more jibber jabber, I think it's about time we jumped in and check out some of these cool settings that you must know. Okay, so I'm going to kick off here in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and I want to show you a, f a really important setting first up. So I'm going to come into Reports. So here in Reports, and I'm sure that you've all been in here many, many times, we have a number of different reports that you can look at. And you can see here that I've got a simple report on active users. So I want to go in and view the report, and right away I can see a potential problem here. And the fact that it's actually gone ahead and it's anonymized all my usernames. Now, for many of you, again, this might not be a problem, and again, it's perfectly acceptable. But if a user's having issue, or you might want to actually investigate a potential problem, then it really is handy to know the user's actual name. So to address this issue, I'm simply going to go into my Microsoft 365 uh, and I'm going to go into organizational settings. And in organizational settings, I'm just going to scroll right down here is we then come up into reports. So in reports here, you can see it says make report data available to uh, Microsoft 365 usage analytics. So if you're using Power BI, and of course, remember that there is a free version of that that you can use. And this is the one here, display concealed users, groups, uh, and site names in all reports. So if you don't want things anonymized, you simply take that checkbox out and click on save. And now if I go back, once I've closed that down, um, you can see you can go back anytime that you want to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go back into my uh, reports here, going to go in here, into my reports, I'm going to go into let's say I'll do usage. And here we have our usage reports. I'm simply going to go in here, I'm going to refresh this page, and now if I scroll down, um, I now can see a user's name. How cool is that? And this is for everything in Microsoft 365, so every report, that's the master switch. Now, one of the most common questions that I get on my channel is, Andy, how do I share my calendar, my Outlook calendar with other people? Well, this is super simple, actually. Um, all I simply do is I come into my settings, again, organizational settings. If you click into calendar, 
First of all, you've got some important settings here. So external sharing, let your users share their calendars with people. So the first thing is you can do it. So users can do this in Microsoft Outlook. They can just go ahead and they can share their calendars. Um, allow anyone to access calendars with an email invitation. So are you going to allow anyone uh, out there, external user to do this. So again, these are options and you can switch those off uh, if you want to. Now in here, you can choose what the users will see, whether they'll see the, sh the free busy information only, whether they'll see the subject and location or all information. Now, um, if you want to manage and control this a little bit better, you simply come into the advanced options here and um, for some really reason, weird reason, they haven't fixed this, but when you click into this, it actually takes you into the classic Exchange Admin Center, which doesn't work. So you need to convert into the new uh, Admin Center. This is the Exchange Admin Center. If you scroll down, come into Organization and Organizational Sharing. And in here, you've got two options. You can either do individual sharing, so I can go in and add what we call an individual sharing policy. So I'll just call this my Oslo Share. And in here, I'll say, click on Next, and I can say, specify domain and share information. So you can do this and you can say, okay, um, I'm going to allow them to share with any any organization out there, Microsoft, Contoso, Adatum, whoever, or only a specific domain. So, for example, if you were in a school or something like that, you want to restrict it, you can do that here. Um, you can also share your calendar folder as well. So what do you want to share? So, again, you can choose either to choose to share as little or as much as you actually want to share there. Um, also, you can share your calendar and your contacts. Now, remember, you're configuring this profile. Um, and then I once I've configured this, I can then assign this, uh, as I said, to a particular user if I want to. Um, now, as well as that, the other thing, of course, that we can also do is you can, uh, rather than individual sharing, you can share the entire organization. So again, just give it a name. So I'll just call this Share1. And let's say this is going to contoso.com. Uh, so if you work with a partner company, my company's called a datum right now. Again, these are just example names. Um, I simply click on next. Do you want to do calendar and free busy information sharing? Again, you've got those same options. So calendar, you've got free busy information. So if you don't want to share specific things, again, this is where you can control it. Likewise, um, again, do you want to uh, do it either for anyone in your organization or only specific security groups. So for example, it might be sales or marketing or, or who have you. In this case, I'm quite happy with my choices. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on next. I've now created the organizational policy for that connection. So for my number three option here, uh, what again, another common question that I get asked is this one here. So in Microsoft 365, you can see, and sometimes it's a bit confusing because it's got a Bing logo on it. This is account linking. And this is super powerful because if you've got users that have got an email address for business of, you know, my Andy at mycompany.com, and you use the same email address for, let's say, a personal Microsoft account. So let's say in the past you've had an Outlook.com account uh, or something like that. Um, this will allow your users to connect both accounts together and it will save you a whole bunch of trouble. So definitely check out that. More details on that will take you through to the learn.microsoft.com article. So super useful. So for my number four, I can't go any further without mentioning this one. Um, uh, we all use tools like Amazon Alexa or Google and tools like that. 
hey, well, if you want to integrate this uh, into Microsoft 365, and it makes it so much more convenient for your users because they can check their calendars, they can send messages and so on, all by using uh, common uh, apps that are out there. So definitely check that out. Uh, of course, allow the organizational wide language model. I suppose the reason why it's off, one may argue it could be a potential security issue. But again, I think if you've got things like multi-factor authentication and you've got the appropriate devices, then all is pretty good. But I think uh, in terms of convenience, again, super useful. That's Azure Speech Services. So up next are definitely one of my absolute favorites, and it's definitely something that you'd need to look at. Um, this is Microsoft 365 Groups, uh, and there are some super important settings here that you need to be aware of. First of all, guests. Let group owners add people outside of your organization as groups or guests. So if you don't want that, this is where you switch it off. Let guest group members access content. Again, if you don't want that, switch it off. And this is super important. You know that when you set up a group and it asks you, do you want an owner or somebody who's got the appropriate permission to be an owner? That's important because owners can assign permissions to other users and they can also invite guests and so on. Um, but this is super important. This is called ownerless groups. So if, there are, if there's a particular group that's got no owners on it, um, by default, it, the admin uh, will get ownership of it. But what you can do is you can actually configure a policy here and you can specify who will receive ownerless notifications. So are you going to send it to all members, active members, or only certain members here? So in other words, what, what the admin's doing here is I'm sending out just a message saying, hey, look, guys, there's nobody set up to own this particular group. Um, is there anybody in the group who would like to volunteer to be an owner? So again, you can have a number of active members. So if you want to keep that low, you can do that. Um, again, how often do you want to notify them? So for a couple of weeks, a week or, or what have you. So then I'm going to click next and I'm going to say, OK, search for a user or group. Um, again, I'm the sender here. So the email is coming from me. Um, this is just a demo account. but This is awesome, isn't it? Check this out. So again, need I need your help with and check it out. The dollar group. Now, the dollar symbol basically means it's an admin field. And as you can see, um, if it's the sales group that needs help or if it's the Manchester marketing group, that will appear in the email as the sales group or the Manchester marketing group. Likewise, hi user display name. So hi, Bob Smith. You're receiving this email because somebody in your organization wants you to be part of it. Um, again, you can put in a guideline. So if you've got a URL for a guideline, you can do that. Again, you can see you get a little preview of that. So this is super, super important, guys. OK, um, so would you like to be a group owner? So this is a preview. So the person receiving this can say yes, either yes or no. OK. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you deal with serverless groups and just some of the admin settings. Again, super useful and extremely powerful. So there you have it, some of the cool settings in Microsoft 365 that admins must know. I mean, and you know that some of that stuff is gonna come up in an exam, right? Hey, well, listen, I really hope that you enjoyed this session. If you did, bump that like button. It does make a difference to my channel. And if you've not subscribed, then go ahead, bump that subscribe button, ring the bell, and come on board and join my learning community. That's it for this time. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you soon. You take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.